Today on Dead Dodge Garage, my 440 runs like crap. Well, this could have something to do with it. This is another lesson in checking everything. The first thing I noticed uh, is all the spark plugs on this side were loose. Incidentally, that didn't fix it. This is a pretty low mileage engine and car, actually. So before we went ahead and decided it had bad valves and ripped the engine out, I took one of these to all the exhaust ports, figured out which ones were cold, and I figured out that they were opposite each other in the order on the cap. So I thought, that's interesting. Maybe it's a weird distributor problem. No, somebody just shuffled the wires on the cap. It's important where the wires go, guys. You can't just throw them on there. The firing order on the 440, like, you know, everything else, is 18436572, but it is counterclockwise. I bumped it over, verified the timing mark, and that one was in the right place. One was not one of our dead cylinders, so I figured it was fine. And two is in the right place, so it just kind of worked from that point. I went around and labeled all the wires, and sure enough, one, seven, four, three, six, five, eight, two? The biggest hint that something was wrong was it's gutless, it kind of vibrates, and there are occasional weird pop farting noises coming out of the carburetor. That's a good hint that either your firing order's wrong, your timing's way off, or you got an intake valve messed up. Three is in the right spot. Only seven and eight were flipped. So why is three dead too? Please hold. This is a 69 town and country wagon, by the way. And it's kind of awesome. Let's see how it starts now. Hmm. Not good. Oh, I mean, it's better. Oh, it's way better. <laughs> Might need a little tuning. Next, we're gonna go ahead and give this thing the five minute fix. Check the idle screws, check the timing, check the max timing, and then, you know, just fiddle with it until it seems right. You know what? Now that the firing order's right, it's definitely close. I stand corrected. We have eight happy cylinders and it's even time now. Neat. And that's how you do that. Didn't even need this thingy. Maybe next time. Don't worry about the oil smoke. It's fine. Unlimited power! Well, it's still kind of a dog. And I think I hear pinging. Good. Oh, by the way, this is an amazing cruiser. If you need to drive cross country with like six of your friends and all their stuff strapped to the roof towing a trailer, look no further than the 1969 Chrysler Town & Country Station Wagon. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. I had to take out a tiny bit of timing, trying to avoid the ping. Unfortunately, there's too much curve in this distributor, so now it doesn't idle as nice. Something tells me that's a future Jamie problem. Nope, there's still the faintest hint of pinging under heavy load. Experience tells me I can't tune that out. It's probably a hot spot in a cylinder. So we're just gonna have to call it good enough. Hey, you go easy on it, it cruises sweet. Allegedly, I'm filming at 70 miles an hour, so that's fine. We're rock solid, baby. Anyway, to summarize, a couple choice tools, like one of those little temperature laser guns. And check everything, verify things that you didn't touch, assume nothing, and hopefully you'll figure little problems out. Doesn't take much to take a car from running not great to pretty darn good. So, there you go. Thanks for watching, and remember, always wear a maker. Did I say 440? I meant 383. That's why there's so much room around it. Whoopsie.